Okay, now that we have the parallax scrolling background and foreground, and we have our ship that can move around, let's actually add some enemies to the game. We're gonna begin by taking our ship, and I'm gonna right click that and say copy, and I'm gonna come under the star shooter, and I'm going to right click and click paste. So now we have a, a copy of the ship. I'm gonna rename this, and I'm gonna call it enemy. So we have the enemy.cs. Okay, so we have this enemy.cs, let's open that up and we're going to rename the class enemy. And of course we will need to rename the constructor enemy as well. Okay, a lot of this is going to be the same from our ship class, but uh, we're gonna need to load a different graphic obviously. And so let's actually make use of that. In here I have my enemy.png file and I'm gonna copy that into the assets folder of my star shooter. And then we're gonna come into the assets folder here and right click on that and actually add the file for the enemy PNG into the asset. So now the enemy is an asset within the project. And if you look at the properties, you can see the build action for that is that it is content. So it will be compiled into the game as we would expect. Okay, so instead of for our enemy.cs, instead of loading the player ship, let's actually load the enemy.png file. And I'm just going to leave the speed at four for now, but I do want to modify this because I don't want the position of this sprite to be at the same position of the ship. What I'd like to do is actually take in the X and Y position where I'd like to store the enemy and set the sprite's position in the X to be this X value that's passed in. And I want the Y value of this position of the enemy to be this Y value that's passed in. So we're modifying the constructor a bit here to not only take the graphics context, but to also take in an integer representing the X and an integer representing the Y position of where we'd like to actually create this enemy. Ultimately, what we're gonna do is allow the game to have multiple enemies, and each one of them should have a different starting position. Now, obviously, the update is not going to look the same because we don't want to be moving this sprite around based on what the user is pushing the buttons. We would actually like the enemy to move based on time. So let's make the enemy move towards the left-hand side of the screen just by subtracting how, how fast he's moving from its x position. s.position.x minus equals speed is the same thing as saying s.position.x equals s.position.x minus speed. So we're just decreasing the x value by that speed. Okay, so now we have an enemy class whose constructor takes in its position and the graphics context, and it sets everything up by loading these enemy texture. And then every time we update the enemy, it's going to move to the left, and every time we render the enemy, it's just going to display that sprite. Okay, so this is our enemy class, and that's all done now. Let's actually create an instance of it, so I'm gonna come into my app main, and let's create a private static enemy. We'll call it E. And then down here in initialize, I'm gonna say E is equal to a new enemy. And then I'll put it in my graphics context. And with regard to the position, let's put it kind of off to the right hand side of the screen. So let's take the graphics screen, rectangle width, and we'll subtract, let's say 200 off of that. And then in the Y position, so now I've passed it the graphics context and I've passed it the X position, but I'll need to specify the Y position. So let's do graphics.screen rectangle.height, and we'll just kind of put it close to the middle. Now obviously this isn't the exact middle because I'm not subtracting half of the height of the enemy's graphics, but what we'll get is this enemy that's displayed uh, just off to the right, hand side of the screen and about in the middle. Now, of course, when I update my game, I'm going to need to update my enemy. So I'm gonna call the update on my enemy inside of the main games update. And of course, I'll also need to render the enemy in my render of the main game. So I'm gonna draw my background, I'm gonna draw my ship, and then I'm going to render the enemy. And then I'll render the foreground and the HUD. So let's run this now and see what we get. Oh, and we get an error here because e.update was a cut and paste from ship, 
And you remember our enemy uh, doesn't need this information about the gamepad, so I just forgot to delete that, uh, that parameter there. Whereas the ship, when we were using it, uh, required that we passed in that gamepad data. The enemy doesn't need that, so let's just delete that out. And now the update method of the ship does not take in any parameters, and so in main, when we call update, we're not passing anything in for that enemy. So let's run this now. And indeed, we get that enemy ship coming at us, moving to the left every frame. Okay. So to review what we did, we created a new enemy class that has a sprite, it has a graphics context, and it has a speed that it's moving at, right? We've got an X and a Y position, so we can query it if we'd like to, and the enemy constructor takes in the graphics context and the initial position in the X, Y that we want it at. We'll load in the enemy.png as a texture and set that sprite to that texture, and then we will set the X and the Y position of that sprite based on whatever is passed into the constructor here. In the update method, we're going to move the enemy's position to the left every frame by the speed. And so we could you know, update this and, and change the speed to be two. And then the enemy ship is gonna be moving much, much slower. All right, so it'd be pretty easy for us to dodge it there. Okay. And then simply the render method just renders that sprite out. And then in the main program, we created an enemy object. We then create a new enemy object here by calling its constructor in the initialize of the main game, placing it just to the, uh, just to the right, and then at about center. And then whenever we update the main game, we want to update the enemy. Whenever, whenever we render the main game, we want to render that enemy. Now you notice it seems a little bit unbelievable that an enemy would just pop up out of midair like that. So what we'd like to do is actually start the enemy off to the right of the screen, to where it's not visible. And that's actually pretty easy to do. We'll just change the initial position to be, let's say, the width of the main screen plus 100. And what this will do is it will cause our enemy to start off screen to the right. And since it's moving to the left, it will eventually appear as if it's coming at us. So let's see what that looks like here, All right? So you see the enemy coming in off screen and it's continuing to move to the right. Uh, it's moving to the left there. And let's run it again and you can see that again. Notice that when the game begins, you don't see the enemy and then after a while you do see that it's coming at us, okay? So that's how you can create an enemy. And what we'll do in the next tutorial is create multiple enemies and show how we can create multiple instances of the same class.